was by myself. And then when you're in a tag team, it's like being married to somebody. Yeah. And I didn't, my style of wrestling, I don't think fit honky tonk style of wrestling because I was much more solid. And I'm not saying I'm not knocking honky, but it was depressing for me. Um, I didn't enjoy it. Uh, when I look back at it and see tapes and stuff, I laugh at it. And I go, well, it wasn't that bad. But at the time, for me, when the situation I was going through, yeah. and uh, I, I didn't enjoy myself too much. <laughs> Not even play guitars or whatever? Or was that actually you guys play guitars, or was that somebody else's? I don't know how to play guitar. I don't know how to play anything. <laughs> All you know is how to do is wrestle. I love music. I love music. And, uh, uh, but I, I'm a wrestler. Yeah. yeah. Not a musician. I don't think we'll see any uh, mus musical albums coming out uh, by Greg the Hammer Valentine with like Prince or, or Pearl Jam or whatever. Uh, okay. And and finally, the second half of the question that I have for you, uh, I'm gonna name a few wrestlers, ones who are still around and maybe some that have passed on. And uh, if you would, ex once I mention a, a wrestler, explain a memory or two about them. Okay. All right, sure. Okay. First one is, of course, legendary Kurt Henning. That's perfect. When I think about Kurt Henning, I think about him spitting his gum and his hand, throwing it up in the air and catching it in his mouth, and all those little perfect things he did. But he was a great guy. And when I heard that uh, he died, I was in Phoenix at the time and heard he had passed away, and he was in my hometown of Tampa. And, uh, you know, I cried about it. Uh, he was a, a great man. He had a great family. It was a accident that, he, you know, that, uh, he, um, that he had there. And, and it was a real shame. What a real waste. Yeah, no kidding. Because uh, he was just getting, well, I guess you can't really say he was in the prime of his career. But uh, I remember the last time I ever saw him wrestle was uh, I watched a, a pay-per-view Actually, this was like a TNA. Of course, I'm sure you've heard TNA, totally nonstop wrestling of, uh, by in Orlando, Florida. Anyway, before they went to Orlando, I remember watching. This is like around 2002, I believe, or 2003. Yeah, and he uh, faced Jeff Jarrett for the then NWA or TNA championship. And, of course, they didn't win it, but uh, that was the last time I ever saw him wrestling, even though I remember him uh Wrestling at uh, making his WWE return in 2002 for the uh, Royal Rumble. I didn't use him good there either. Yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's a shame. It's a real shame. The guy was in terrific shape when he died, and he could have easily made a comeback. But it's just one of those things that uh, when Vince is done with it, he's done with it, you know. Huh. That's kind of sad. I mean, you don't normally hear wrestlers. You don't really hear wrestlers really say that on the TV. I suppose they can't, or or they or they would like to, but they just don't, or whatever. Okay, now here's here's a little positivity anyway for wrestler, Ric Flair. Uh, yeah, Ric Flair was always a good friend of mine, and he's a, a consummate professional. Uh, you can't say nothing bad about Rick, and. Uh, I haven't seen Rick on the, on the TV lately. I haven't been watching it. I guess they they beat him up pretty bad, and maybe he's getting ready to make a return. But uh, you know, my hats off to him. To uh, you know, I we we came up the same way. And uh, Johnny Valentine, my dad trained Rick. They were partners before me and Rick became partners before my dad had that plane crash. Rick was in that plane crash and survived it, and. Uh, Hats off to Rick, you know, um, I would love, I would love, to, and I've tried pitching it to the WWE to let me come in and wrestle Rick. Who's the best old timer out there, you know, and uh, I think it would be a great match, and, um, well, I know it would, I don't think, I know, and uh, you're talking about a hundred years of experience there, <laughs> maybe not that many, well, but, you know, yeah. close, 60 or something. Yeah, he's he's a year older than I am, okay. and um, you know my hats off to Rick. He's great, great professional. And we know one day he will be in the Hall of Fame, hopefully soon. Even while he's still wrestling. As far as what you're asking about the uh, if he's returned to TV, he has returned a little bit. Uh, he's actually started a few now with uh, Mick Foley at uh, he faced Mick Foley in a two L three falls match at Vengeance last month. Oh, 
And, uh, they really don't like each other. Yeah, and I'm surprised Vince let them do that. But uh, I, yeah, and and I think now they're going to probably uh, have him face Mick Fo- or Rick Flair again at uh, face Mick Foley at SummerSlam, I believe. Well, Rick uh, Flair said in his book that Mick Foley wasn't a good wrestler. <laughs> he was horrible. And, you know, it's basically Mick Foley had his own style. Nobody could fall off the cage backwards, uh, do the things that, that Mick Foley could do, but he couldn't do the things that Rick or myself could do in the ring. So he just devised a way that, that he could become a, a standout in another direction. You think Mick Foley's like a stuntman like what Mick Flair said? But I think Rick, Rick uh, should have uh, complimented Mick because Mick has done a lot of good things, and Mick's, Mick's a good guy. Yes, he is. Even though they have him as a bad guy right now, but I'm sure everyone knows it's just a storyline and whatnot. Okay, here, here's some uh, more wrestlers here. Uh, of course, the legendary Hulk Hogan. What, what can you say? Yeah, what can you say about Hulk Hogan? They were supposed to, they were trying to hook me up with Hulk Hogan. I, I, I will say that uh, a couple months ago. They wanted to bring Hogan back in and let him wrestle me, and um, but I don't know what happened to that, but uh, it didn't happen. Now Hogan is coming back. He's going to wrestle Randy Orton. I just did a Hogan's Knows Best, and it's going to be on television coming up, and uh, it's a bunch of wrestlers invade his house down there in Miami, and we all get... Uh, we all have a bunch of shots of tequila and <laughs> drink beer and wine and whiskey and everything, and we jump in the pool, and and it's a crazy deal. I, it's going to be airing on his new season. Good luck to Hawksy. You can't. He's the top banana, no matter what era you you're going to talk about. He is number one, and will always be number one. Okay. Uh, of course, we all know he has that Hogan Knows Best TV show, as you imagine. We we do get the VH1 network over here. Thanks to Showberg Table for that. And uh, here's another wrestler, Terry Taylor, a.k.a. the Red Rooster. Terry Taylor's, uh, we were tag teams uh, together. In fact, we won the uh, United States Championship in WCW. A little short term for me, I got disgusted and left uh, because it has so many. When you have wrestlers running a, a company, yeah. that's why WCW ended up being run right into the ground and Vincent Mann bought them out because you have wrestlers running a company and you've got a bunch of egos. you got to have owners that don't get into the ring and run it. And that's why Vince is still alive and that's why his company is still doing good because you don't have a wrestler in there running things that's why wcw went and at one time in 97 i believe the because i came back i came back to wcw 97 and they were they were knocking uh knocking uh vince out of the ratings war right there for a while for 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 a while yeah and uh, and uh but Terry Taylor, good partner. Uh, he's a good man. Uh, he's a great talker. I thought he was a great wrestler. He never really got to the heights that I thought he could have. You know, he was, wasn't really one of the bigger guys. I'm not that much bigger than Terry Taylor either, but uh, uh, I think he's involved with uh, this TNA thing or something. I think he has something to do with that. But, uh, um, yeah. But uh, Terry's a good man. Okay. I, I recently seen him in a uh, Splenda commercial. I don't know. He, he did like a little deal for Splenda. He and his family. I don't know if you've seen that at all or whatever. Okay. Now talk about the Hart family, of course. I've already mentioned about that. Uh, you, you, know, you said you got trained by Stu Hart. Everyone knows that, I hope. Uh, talk about a couple of his sons, of course. Bret Hart first and Owen Hart second. Well, it's, uh, uh, Bret Hart... Um, Unfortunately, uh, got hurt by Bill Goldberg and WCW, and he's never been the same since. And uh, he just kind of went into hiding. And then he had that wrestling with shadows on TV all the time. And and that's all that that that's pretty close to the truth. Um, and uh, so Brett kind of just uh, it's it's good to see him come back. I was on one of his first shows that he came back and and uh, 
uh, some of those wrestle reunion things he's come around for the independent uh, wrestle reunions and 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 uh, some you know they're basically autograph signings and wrestling matches but Brett doesn't wrestle anymore I don't think he ever could wrestle anymore because he had a slight stroke and that was caused by falling off his bicycle I don't know if it was a motorbike or just a bicycle but uh, that all stemmed from the fact that he got pile dragged on his head and for for people that doesn't think wrestling is real that that was one real thing and Goldberg was a, a little green and a little overzealous, and uh, it <laughs> it happened. But uh, Brett Brett is a good man, and Owen Hart. Uh, uh, I didn't know Owen like I knew Brett.